Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 10th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The Struts 2 vulnerability I mentioned yesterday is still being exploited. If you have web applications relying on Struts 2, then it is critical that you either patch Struts 2 as soon as possible or that you apply other countermeasures like a web application firewall. At this point, the exploit I have seen either just tests the system and checks if it's vulnerable by echoing back a string or it's running a command like who am I? In one case, I observed the attacker attempting to install a well-known Linux backdoor. Of course, these are random attacks against systems that are not vulnerable that are not even running Java. If you have a vulnerable system, then you may see more targeted attacks in addition to these random ones. The exploit sticks pretty close to what was released as a Metasploit module, varying the user agent and the order of the headers. And then we got an interesting submission from a reader with an email that was intended to attack the mail server. Now, typically when we're talking about malicious emails, we're talking about things like attachments that are executable. In this case, the attachment was a zip file. And actually it wasn't the content of the zip file. It was a problem. Instead, one of the file names inside the zip file included shellcode. Haraka is built on top of Node.js and it is known as a high performance mail server that's often used in front of a regular more full featured mail server in order to speed up mail delivery. Now, this vulnerability was fixed back in September. An exploit was released end of January. It's a very trivial exploit. Really, all you have to do is format that shell command correctly, use it as a file name, and then zip it up. The problem here is in how Haraka actually analyzes these attachments. In this particular case, the exploit attempts to install a pretty common IRC bot. So nothing really all too dangerous here. But if you're running this mail server, make sure that you're up to date. And ESET is reporting that it identified several applications in the Google Play Store that are stealing Instagram credentials. The applications claim to be Instagram related and use this as a pretense to ask the user for the Instagram credentials, but then just exfiltrate those credentials to a command and control server. Social media accounts, of course, are quite valuable as once an attacker is able to log in as the user. They're then able to spread malware to followers, friends, and such of the compromised account. And for Drupal users, there is a new exploit available for an unserialized vulnerability in Drupal 7's services module. The services module essentially allows you to build clients that connect to your Drupal instance via standard web services like SOAP and REST. Now the big oversight in this particular module was that it allows for various formats for the data to be transmitted. Some of them are obvious like XML and JSON, but they're also allowing the PHP serialized format, which then of course will lead to PHP code being unserialized and in the process executed. Now, by leveraging existing code within this module and Drupal, it's uh, now possible to, first of all, basically do SQL injection, execute arbitrary SQL commands, but also execute arbitrary code on the system. Drupal released an update on Wednesday, but uh, given that an exploit is already available, you really have to apply this very quickly again. So in short, for Friday and this weekend, you do have Drupal, you do have struts, and if you have the Haraka mail server, you have to patch that as well. 
All of these vulnerabilities are actively being exploited. So maybe some virtual patching with a web application firewall or an IPS will buy you some time. Well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.